Hello info person, this is Anton, and let's discuss the famous wall signal once again. But first, just a little bit of a background so that we're all on the same page. And it all started sometimes after the Second World War, when the radio astronomy really started to pick up. Back then, a lot of astronomers started to propose that, hypothetically, if there was some kind of an alien civilization out there, and it really wanted to announce its presence, or possibly communicate with someone else, it would very likely rely on the so-called hydrogen line. The frequency of 1.421 MHz, created by the transition of neutral hydrogen when it changes its energy state in the process releasing an extremely specific frequency of light. The light with wavelength of 21 cm, and the light that can technically penetrate everything in the universe, easily moving through all of the dust in the universe without being blocked by anything, and in some sense, visible from everywhere all at once. And though naturally this is also created by pretty much most of the hydrogen clouds out there, if someone were to make these particular emissions appear artificial or basically modulate them in such a way that they definitely appeared as they were produced by intelligence, in some sense all of this would produce a perfect way to not just announce your presence to everyone out there, but obviously also communicate over long distances. And so back in 1959, an Italian physicist, Giuseppe Cocconi, who you see in this image from 1967, along with the American Philip Morrison, proposed searching for extraterrestrial intelligence using this 21 cm hydrogen line. And essentially based on the assumption that any kind of a extraterrestrial intelligence might be basically doing the same, mapping the universe using the hydrogen line, and would thus maybe decide to announce itself using this very specific frequency. And so based on these early principles and these early assumptions, radio astronomers started to basically look around the night skies trying to find something. And approximately two decades later, while working on the Ohio State University Big Ear Radio Telescope, Jerry Ammon, who you see right here, detected an unusual signal in that frequency that lasted for 72 seconds and was coming from the constellation of Sagittarius. And because this was such a surprising discovery, the astronomer marked it as WOW, which eventually led to this being known as the WOW signal that remained a mystery for several decades. And because of its unusual properties, this was assumed to be maybe coming from extraterrestrial intelligence somewhere out there, with the value itself being extremely close to the value of the hydrogen line, but much much stronger than anyone expected. And as a result, several follow-ups tried to rediscover the source of the signal or possibly hear it again, with SETI also conducting several follow-ups, including potential technosignature search, trying to see if they could hear something else. But years and years after, still nothing. No technosignatures, no additional signals coming from this location, and more importantly, even Jerry Ammon, who discovered this, mentioned that we should have heard it again if this was coming from an alien species. And so he even proposed that maybe this was actually coming from Earth and was just basically a reflection from some kind of a satellite out there. But that was extremely unlikely, just because of the chances of that happening, and because back then there were just not a lot of satellites to reflect from. And so naturally, so many different explanations have been proposed over the years, with pretty much all of them suggesting that this was a natural phenomenon. But here, before we tackle the best one, let me actually tell you a little bit more about the signal, just so that you understand what we're looking at. So first, the letters and the numbers. This is not an actual message, and instead represent a signal strength denoted by numbers and then letters, with U in this case representing the highest possible signal-to-noise ratio. And so in that sense, this just tells us that this was an extremely strong signal. But more importantly, if graphed, it looks like this. You have a signal becoming stronger and stronger for approximately 36 seconds, which then peaks and starts to diminish for the next 36 seconds. And that signal had no modulation and no additional information in it. It basically resembled a kind of a extremely strong beam in that frequency of 1.4 GHz. But timing here is also extremely important, because this actually shows us something else. Because it was exactly 72 seconds, this actually showed us that this was the result of the Earth's rotation, or basically that it was extraterrestrial and was at first coming into view for 36 seconds, then peaked and then started to move away from us for the next 36 seconds, with the source itself very likely being extremely far from the planet. But because there was no modulation and this appeared to be some kind of a continuous wave, the main reason the signal was so exciting 
is really because we've just never seen anything like this before. It was the first such signal ever found, but in reality it really had all of the signs of some kind of a natural phenomenon. A phenomenon coming from that constellation of Sagittarius and possibly caused by something involving hydrogen. Nevertheless, for many decades, a lot of scientists tried to see if we can actually maybe find the source of this or possibly find techno signatures coming from this location. In the last five years there were a few papers that first estimated where this possibly came from and then even tried to find individual stars that might contain some kind of a planet where the signal could have originated. Obviously in this case, assuming that this was from some kind of a civilization. But because the signal has never been detected again, and because once again it just appeared a little bit too natural and not artificial enough, most scientists did not think this was aliens and actually proposed quite a lot of additional explanations. For example, apparently, according to Antonio Paris, one of the astronomers in Florida, around this time there were a couple of comets in the same regions of the night skies. And he actually proposed that maybe the hydrogen cloud surrounding these comets could have produced some kind of an effect. But most astronomers actually don't think it's possible, and so this particular hypothesis, despite being interesting, was rejected pretty quickly. And then we have this new proposition, the proposition from August of 2024 that right now doesn't just make sense, it makes a lot of sense and might even lead us to some other discoveries involving other mysteries such as FRBs or fast radio bursts. And so let's talk about this recent paper that was just released that potentially solves the wow signal once and for all. Now the lead author here is Abel Mendez, who is pretty known on his work in Arecibo Observatory, but also for developing the famous Earth Similarity Index that's usually used in describing various planets and comparing them to planet Earth. And so for the past seven or so years, Mendez and his team were working on analyzing radio data coming from various regions containing famous red dwarf stars with potentially habitable planets. And so here they were looking at planets in systems like TRAPPIST-1, trying to discover any potential radio frequencies between 1 and 10 gigahertz. And this was based on some of the older observations from Arecibo, but also from other observatories as well, and they had quite a lot of data collected. But while observing these stars and obviously looking for signals coming from their planets, they started to discover something entirely different. They started to discover a bunch of bizarre signals around various celestial objects that surprisingly resembled the wow signal way too much. And here this wasn't just one or two, it was a lot all over the place, with a lot of recent observations basically resembling wow signal, just not as powerful, but in an extremely similar narrow band and with a very similar profile. And though naturally the first assumption here is that, okay, I guess there are aliens everywhere trying to communicate, the more realistic explanation is that these are actually natural phenomena formed by something very specific. Here by focusing on the Tea Garden star, mostly because it contained the longest drift scan so far, they observed various signals consistent with something produced by cold hydrogen clouds. But here these clouds were suddenly brightened by an extremely powerful transient or by possibly some kind of a stellar emission that very likely lasted for just a brief moment but was powerful enough to suddenly make these clouds extremely bright, emitting a lot of radio light in the process. Specifically emitting what we usually refer to as a maser, or I guess for the lack of better words, a microwave laser. A well-known astrophysical phenomenon that's usually present around various clouds. Here's one of the more famous examples in the Jellyfish Nebula. And so these natural phenomena usually occur in various microwave or radio frequencies when something very powerful excites a molecular cloud making it emit tremendous energies. Which means that something extremely powerful must have happened in the vicinity, causing these hydrogen clouds to start emitting these masers visible all the way from planet Earth. And though we obviously have no idea what exactly was this transient and what caused these clouds to appear this way, the researchers in the study believed that it was possibly some kind of a magnetar or a similar powerful object able to create very powerful emissions very suddenly. And so in essence, this schematic right here kind of explains what they think might have happened. Some kind of a powerful source hit the hydrogen cloud, which was then visible from planet Earth. And based on the observations of hydrogen clouds in the vicinity of these signals, this does seem to be like the more likely explanation right now. But no observations of the actual source of the transient. So basically we don't actually know if this was a magnetar or something entirely different. But intriguingly, if they're correct, and right now the evidence is pretty strong, 
It essentially then suggests that the wow signal was just a very unusual example of some kind of a rare astronomical event involving a hydrogen line maser flare and possibly even the first one ever seen, but in this case also extremely powerful and possibly caused by some kind of a very powerful transient. And so now the obvious question becomes, so what? If this was a magnetar and if it was able to create these powerful radio emissions by shining at this hydrogen cloud, this could provide important answers for another mystery, the famous FRBs or fast radio bursts that to date still don't have a good explanation but have always believed to be caused by magnetars, possibly involving some kind of a cloud or some kind of a pulsar nebula. And because similar clouds do actually appear in the vicinity of the famous magnetar that produced FRBs right here in the Milky Way, all of this could potentially have extremely similar origins. But that's assuming that it was caused by a magnetar. Right now, as far as I know, no magnetars have been discovered anywhere in the vicinity, and so we don't really know what caused these clouds to become so bright. But since astrophysical masers are usually exceptionally rare, to astrophysicists this is going to be a super exciting discovery. To date, one of the first discovered and possibly one of the best known masers out there is the one coming from the star MWC349. And in this case, it seems to be caused by some kind of a nebula around the star or possibly even coming from the star's disk. And so by discovering so many masers out there, with all of them basically resembling the famous wow signal, in essence kind of resolves one mystery, the mystery of the wow signal itself, but creates a new mystery, the mystery of their origin and what's causing so much energy to be released to suddenly make these clouds so bright. Naturally not something we're going to be answering yet, but I'm sure in the next few years, with additional observations and additional studies, we'll possibly have new answers and new resolutions. Until then though, well, it looks like the wow signal is no longer as mysterious as it used to be. And also, unfortunately, it most likely did not come from some kind of a extraterrestrial intelligence. But it still seems to be some kind of a really interesting mystery and some kind of an unusual natural phenomenon that we currently do not understand. And once we do, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.